This is Sid. Sid, hi, it's Vanessa from LA Push. What are you doing? I'm buried underground. Oh, okay. I'm really glad you called. This is my 24 hour supervised self burial challenge. <laughs> I'm gonna be in this box for the next 24 hours underground, oh buried. It's not so bad. My bro, Logan Run, is supervising and running the live feed. Thanks to him, <laughs> I'll be safe. James, Jeff in Las Vegas. James, good to see you again. You too. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, man. He knows I'm a big fan of his too. So I just, this is such a, oh, oh my God, Doom <laughs> Generation, Donnie Darko. I'm just like, you know, man, just, just yeah. <laughs> total thrill. This movie speaks so much to the times we live in with social media, you know, looking for views and stunts from the cinnamon challenge to the Tide Pod challenge. Yeah. Where did, I mean, this had to be just like a, a bolt for you to, to think of this movie for the plot, huh? You know, it, it is kind of generational because it, there's a challenge, an internet challenge. And, and that came got by accident because we were looking to make a stoner comedy and I'd wanted, I've been trying to make a contained thriller for years, written a bunch of them. And then when we found out these kids in Russia were actually doing this, we, we just put the two things together. So that, that was kind of how it came about. And then the internet aspect of it was, you know, was not naturally evolved. So yeah, that's how it started. That's insane. So, you know, cause I was looking online before the interview today and there are, there are people burying themselves for up to 50 hours. Yeah. And it's not like you're watching a, a major network program where they have all these safety precautions and everything going on, but these, these just people are insane, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. That's why at the end of the film and the credits, we say, don't bury yourself in a box. Oh <laughs> exactly. You know? I bet but, you had a room full of lawyers too, huh? Didn't you, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when people do it, I mean, you know, the Ryan Reynolds film, Buried, was a major influence on this movie because I saw it years ago. I'm like, man, they spent 90 minutes in the box. They never came out of the box in that film. And that, I couldn't believe it. So to me, that was a big inspiration, even though our film, and I mean, my brother and a lot of friends go see that film because like, I don't need a box for 90 minutes. So I knew if we had pieces of that, it would be a good climax, you know, but being there the whole time was not really an option. <laughs> and James, Sid is looking for the quick stunt, the quick, he needs money, burying yourself for 24 hours. You had to be reading the script going eventually that you're going to be in some sort of confined area. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I was, I was talking about that before with Paul. It was, it was good, you know, I love the script so much, but I knew right off the bat, it was good that I didn't think about it until I filmed it. Just <laughs> don't think about it. <laughs> you know, it's and funny. Then, uh... I was gonna say, it, it helps. Um, I didn't, you know, prepare myself in a box rehearsing, but I did sit under a table and look at the top of the table and lie on my back and rehearse lines like that. So that helped a, a tremendous amount, believe it or not. Yeah. And but you, you know, know this... yeah, and, and in a way, you, you know, the, the fresher the experience was for you, the more real the experience that was going to look, you know, on camera. So I think that was that was the, the non rehearsal is important, I think, for something like that. So it just feels urgent and present, you know, and scary. Also, also the desperation for Sid, because, you know, this is so generational, you know, because what uh, his uh, Logan, his Gen Z partner, you know, his partner in crime. And that generation gap, I just love that line. Do you know how much we can make off millions of views? And Sid's like, what? How? No. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> you know, because someone Sid's age wouldn't be doing this stunt unless it was desperation or a last resort, right? Right, right, exactly. And, 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 and him doing the stunt is very symbolic in the film because it's really about him traveling to the underworld to confront his past, right? I mean, that is ultimately so that we understand more clearly why he is the way he is. So... It's um, it's there's a mythological journey that happens in this film. To everything that happens to him symbolically with going up, and, and I'm not going to give it away, but there's a lot going on. And but you know, it was ultimately about creating this sensitive character and and you know, role reversal because he's the damsel in distress if you think about it in this film. It, and that was where James came to play, his experience. I mean, you know, I, he's a revered actor. I mean, I, when we had the chance to work with him, we were like immediately like this is going to work. But he put so much of himself into this film. He's already a very sensitive guy and he just it just worked. Do you know what I mean? For me, I was like, this is the kind of person 
that can that can embody this role and and, and he did and also james i just love the communication that you have you have a live feed going on right so but you have the entire world watching you do this stunt and uh i love the the, the casual phone calls you would get too so uh but i i felt claustrophobic the entire film you know and i i am not good in small spaces like that and was there a moment where you know maybe you could answer this too paul where you said look we got to stop filming i need to get out of here you know it's just kind of there were a couple moments where i freaked out a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> and paul how do you how do you shoot coverage with someone in and being buried alive you know as from a director's point of view i'm right. because i went to film school and i'm looking at this i'm like okay how do we stage this okay well we knew that we knew to sell the illusion we had to dig a real hole right so the setup we had to dig a real hole put a real box in a real hole and see jimmy go into the box in the real hole and close the lid but once the lid is closed we're in a stage and the box is on a plinth and the one side is open and we're filming in so and so then there's a bunch of effects and stuff around it but you know and we also had gopros in the box so it allowed us to be really contained but for some of the filming we had to have all four sides on the box in the studio with sandbags on the lid and stuff so that you could hit it and so a, couple of times, a couple of times there there was a panic stations for a few seconds just because the lid won't open i don't know about you but i, I couldn't have been in that box i'm claustrophobic no way oh, but he's an actor. that he's an actor that is what he does he's he can go into any situation and be like here you go i mean that that's the brilliance of an actor is they can just do that you're not here and I'm going to make him reveal the secrets of the movie because, you know, people are probably just curious, like, was James in any danger at any time or how did that work? You know, so. Yeah, no danger. No, yeah, it's just it, it, it more literally was because I spent a lot of time rehearsing in the box as well, you know, <laughs> to get comfortable with it, with my dialogue. So when they did shut me up the few times and then they put the sandbag on it so you can't open it and you can't really open it from below. And then they put light in it. So they shine a big bright light through the breathing hole to light my face so at that point it starts to get really hot in, in there. and and <laughs> doing the chinese water torch and dripping water onto his forehead you know because there's a whole thing that happens with weather so he was so in a dark box <laughs> with a water drip on his forehead i mean it was you know yeah it's bad point. enough you're buried alive but then all of a sudden you may drown too so it's just i mean you play on all kinds of fears in this movie it was, well, you know, it was a fear of mine, honestly, to get in there and do it. Even when I read the script, I'm like, this is kind of, I don't know about that last part. And then that's also what clicked in me because I loved everything about the script so much. It's like, but the layers that are, you know, peeled back when you, and you start to uncover really who Sid is, it, it really kind of hit me, it hit home and it hit me in the heart. So it was like something that I have to challenge myself. I have to do this, especially because I feel so strongly about it. And because it kind of scares me. Yeah. Well, congratulations, guys, on a great thriller. And uh, I love social commentary. I love movies that 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 uh, that give us a, a social meaning and what's the, the current times. It's just it's just brilliant, brilliant filmmaking. So thanks oh, so much, man, guys. That, that, that means so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for giving us a chance and watching the movie again. And Jeff, it's great to see you. Yeah, I had to take a few edibles after the movie too. So <laughs> before, <laughs> before, during, and after. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, look at Thank that, you, gentlemen. Be careful when you're with this before you go to a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you guys visit us in Las Vegas soon, and uh, you have a great holiday. Thanks so much. Thank you, you Jeff. Too. Thank Bye, you, Jeff. Have a great one.